Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, tasting Chilan Oolong. In this video, I'm gonna be introducing you to Summer Haze, Chilan Oolong. We're gonna scope the tea and we're gonna do a 10 step tasting. This video is gonna go under the single tea tastings playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give it the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then go click that button. I am in Regent's Park, it's a Saturday. I am busy doing tasting notes. You can see I have lots and lots of tea here to taste. We have a whole raft of teas coming. It's really exciting. I'm a little bit overwhelmed with the amount of teas that we found um, this year. So we've got lots and lots of teas coming. I've got lots of tasting notes to do. And um, I will be releasing information about those teas over the course of the next few weeks. You will see videos um, about those teas and I'm very, very excited about them too. We also have um, teas that we've already had before, but new batches, every batch is always different and we've got some exciting new batches as well um, that I mo won't, probably won't have a chance to do videos about. For example, Boulang Black, you should check out Boulang Black. We've got a new black, um, batch of Boulang Black and it is incredible. Um, so there's lots and lots, stay tuned, sign up to our newsletter, um, make sure you're following us on all our social uh, circles so that you are up to date with all the latest releases because they are going to be coming thick and fast. But I thought what I'd do today is pause my tasting session in Regent's Park and do a tasting session with you on this tea. So this is a new tea that we've picked up from Fujian province. This is Chilan Oolong. We are calling it Summer Haze. And let me show you the leaves here. This is Chilan Oolong and uh, we're gonna scope this tea now. So, season for this tea is, it was picked in May 2016. So about a year old, you know my feelings on these wuyi oolongs, these charcoal roasted oolongs, that I prefer to drink them, you know, at least six months after roast, um, and it's perfectly fine now. In fact, I would say it's in peak, peak uh, condition right now. So this is May 2016. Um, it's a uh, um, cultivar, is the Chi Lan cultivar. Now the Chi Lan cultivar is a variety which is grown all around South China in Guangdong province, in Fujian province, uh, and Xi County um, where we've just been and they make Tie Guan Yin. They also grow this um, variety of tea. And it's been introduced into Wu Yi um, around I think 1930s or so. It was introduced into the Wu Yi mountains and it has grown. It's not one of the famous Wu Yi varieties. There are lots of famous we uh, varieties like the Chidans, the Beidos, the Tielohans, all of those ones. I've done videos about those um, cultivars. You should check them out. If you haven't tried a Chidan variety, uh, Empress Oolong or Da Hong Pao, a proper pure Chidan, you should definitely check that out. I'll put a link in the description below. But all of those classic, very famous Wuyi cultivars are very well known. This is a lesser known one, and I think um, that that needs to change. So this is a Chilan variety. The origin of this, it comes from Wuyi. It comes from Hu Xiao, which is known as Roaring uh, Tiger Cliff. Roaring Tiger Cliff, so it's a very good, really uh, well-known field for Wuyi oolongs. So it comes from Wuyi Mountains in Fujian, in China, obviously. Picking and processing, just like most oolong strip oolongs, it's third and fourth leaf, so up to the third and fourth leaf, no buds. Um, it's gonna go through the solar withering phase, it'll go through the indoor withering phase, it'll go through a shaking process, an oxidation process, a firing process, a rolling process, and then it will be uh, um, sorted, and then it will be um, dried and sorted again, and then charcoal roasted. This has been charcoal roasted for around 10 to 15 hours. So not a super heavy roast, but kind of a medium roast, um, which I think suits this tea. Probably closer to 10 hours. Uh, finally, E stands for elevation. This is about 800 meter high. So pretty high altitude, especially when you're comparing it to other Wuyi oolongs. Right, so that's the variety um, and the uh, scoping of the tea. Chilan, for those um, who don't know, basically um, translates to rare orchid. And um, 
It's a kind of interesting tea, wui, this uh, wui oolong, because a lot of people associate wui oolongs with very deep, very rich, very dark, um, very heavily roasted um, kind of wintry teas. Um, but the Chilan is uniquely light. It has a much lighter approach. It's got much more um, of those top end notes, more of those freight, more of those kind of tall aromas. And that is what I love about this and why I like to drink it in the summer and why it's called summer haze. So it's more of a light variety. And uh, when we get into the tasting, you will hopefully, um, I will hopefully pick out those notes. So let's get on with the tasting. Um, right, so I've got a guy one here. I'm just going to eyeball it. Um, so, if you don't have a a scale here, then you know you need to go halfway. If you're feeling generous, a little bit above halfway, closer to two thirds, something like this. Take a little look at the leaves in the guy one. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to heat the guy one up first because it's had a chance to cool down. So we're gonna do a 10 step tasting. For those of you who don't know the 10 step tasting protocol, again, I'll put a link in the description below. This is the protocol that we use to do all our tasting to really get to know the tea very well. So the first step is heating up your teaware because I want to smell the dry leaf. Now I'm gonna put the leaves back in, something like that. Put that to the side. Make sure the wind doesn't blow it away. Leave the lid on for a few seconds and then we're going to stick our nose into these leaves and see what we get. So this is the first tasting I've done since we got this batch in. We picked this up from Fujian province. Mm, mm, mm. So you're getting the, the, the uh, uh, whisper of charcoal. It's not a strong heavy roast as I said. It moves into a nutty note. I would say baked almonds. Charcoal, baked, baked almonds, but there is a, a definite, uh, distinctive floral and fruity aroma coming off it, even on the dry leaf. And that's, us that's unusual for a wuyi um, oolong to get it on the dry leaf. A slight kind of um, tropical fruits, but more, more of the lighter end of tropical fruits kind of Asian pears. Yeah, custard apples. Is it custard apples? I think so. You know, those green um, apples you get. So kind of those lighter um, Asian fruits. Really nice, a slight woodiness as well. So now what we want to do, so that's the first step, take, smelling the dry leaf. Now we're gonna do the rinse. And then we're going to smell the wet leaf. So start off with the lid because this is too wet. Oh, fruity, fruity, fruity. Oh, wow. Really, really fruity. Mm. So it's definitely stronger fruit smell. I'm smelling mangosteen, one of my favorite fruits, which is sweet but slightly sour and uh, has a has a that creamy white flesh lychees so those white flesh asian fruits lychees and mangosteens a little bit of peach mm, but now i'm getting a slight kind of incense uh, smell as well like some woody woody scent um, those very fragrant wood maybe like a sandalwood right now the leaves had have had a chance to um, release their steam. I can get the nose in here. Oh yes, mangosteens. Mangosteens, mangosteens, mangosteens. It's incredible. And then the woody note, the wet woody note, charcoal is there, but it's a very fruity uh, charcoal smell. And I'm getting meadows. I know I'm in the <laughs> in a field right now. I'm trying to kind of um, distance myself from the smells coming here. It's not particularly um, a lot of flowers here, so there is a grassy smell here, but definitely summery. It's got a juiciness to it in the aroma. Very juicy. I can kind of, it's already making my 
mouth starting to water. It's kind of got this slightly sour, juicy note to it, which again, unusual for a Wuyi Oolong. Okay, so that is the uh, wet leaf. Now we're gonna do our first brew. I'm gonna brew this, we've got 95 degree water, which is about 205 Fahrenheit. We're gonna be brewing for about 15 to 20 seconds. Um, I like to brew these as always, you, anybody who's watched my videos know I like to brew things a little bit harder um, than, um, than maybe the average. Um, but it's good when you're doing tasting notes to just bring out as much as possible, experience the full character of the tea, including its weak notes if there are any. All right, I think that that's enough. I'm not sure what the time was, maybe about 15 seconds. Okay, so now, color. Show you the color. There we go. So it's kind of um, a golden, golden hay uh, color. I would say hay straw, but a little bit more golden, but definitely got that slight um, uh, gray note. It's not perfectly fluorescent. It's a little bit cloudy. Um, so it's got this. Yeah, it's a it's a slightly cloudy gold straw colored liquor. Very nice, I'll show you the um, leaves now. And what you'll notice is, oh, we didn't do the, the eyes dry leaf. That was the first step. So let me, let me describe the leaves a little bit to you. So these leaves here, you can see, they are a kind of auburn brown, um, but they have a slight green tinge to them too, especially when you start to see it hydrating. They are very light. That's one thing you'll notice about this oolong tea is it's extremely light i mean in terms of its weight it's a very light tea and i would say that all varieties and all teas they have their strengths they have their inherent strengths and they have their inherent weaknesses and um, the inherent strengths of the this tea is its brightness is it's 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 bursting forth with brightness. Um, and the weaknesses that you can find in the Chilan variety is that it's too weak. It doesn't have enough body. It doesn't have enough um, substance about it. It doesn't have enough structure about it. The minerality can be a little bit um, flimsy. And um, so what we're trying to source when we source these Chilans is something that has all of those high, all of the, the things you expect for a Chilan to have, but not to exhibit the weaker notes of the variety. And when we were in Fujian, we really enjoyed this tea. So here we go. Hopefully it has translated well. It's traveled well, I should say. Cheers. So first thing I'm doing is thinking about texture. Soft. Soft, medium, I would say light to medium in terms of body, not a super thick tea. Refreshing, light, soft, smooth. With a mineral grippiness, but the mineral grippiness is light. It's just laying, uh, laying a kind of dusting of minerality on my tongue. It's not something that is instant quench, kind of pulling my tongue. It's got a, a physical sensation. It's nice, it's satisfying, I can feel it on my throat. Um, but it's a kind, of a, a, a kind of gentle, chalky grippiness rather than something that's very, very uh, restrictive and very, very dry. Very nice, okay. So we do the texture first because your mouth is, that's the first experience. Once you've tasted a few times, then your, your tongue is gonna get used to that uh, sensation. It's like temperature, isn't it? Like, you know, you first feel how cold or hot something is when you first experience it, but then your body gets used to it. So you wanna try and do that first. And the other reason is because the first infusion is usually the, um, the leaf is just starting to wake up. So flavors are gonna be more pronounced in, in further infusions, which is why you should never throw your leaves away after just one infusion. But let's get into taste. Nuttiness is there. I would say that I've got roasted almonds. The charcoal is there and that will die down as we go through the infusions. 
the fruitiness is starting to come out. It's kind of got the um, light Asian pear. So, you know, that very, it's, it's, it's kind of watery and refreshing Asian pear um, fruitiness. And I'm getting through the nose a little butteriness. And I am getting flowers. But the flowers are kind of a little bit uh, more, they're not something that's in your face. It's not like an orchid, even though this is called rare orchid. It's not like a jasmine. It has those notes, but it's a little bit more diverse. It's a little bit more meadow flowers. But I expect those to come out a little bit more ripe. Let's give this the second infusion. Second infusion is always one of the favorites and we're going to leave this again for 20 seconds you know we've got a brewing guide if you're interested you can check it out i'll put a link in the description below but please guys if you're following that brewing guide it is all about instinct it's all about following your own uh, taste don't follow it like it's some cast iron rules you know it's something to experiment with and um, you will get to know the leaves you will get to see how they're opening up. That's the wonderful thing about Gaiwan. You can have a little peek. You can see how it's how it's unfurling. You can see the color of the liquor a little bit. I want to brew this a little bit stronger. This is not, I'm tasting it. We've been, I've been walking, so this is not uh, perfectly 95 degrees. It's a little bit cooler than I wanted it to be, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, but it's you know, close. I would say it's about 90 degrees, maybe 195 Fahrenheit, something like that. I would prefer it to be a tiny bit hotter. Right. Leaves are starting to open up. Take a little look. Starting to see the green, right? You're rehydrating the leaf. So it's coming back from dry and it's coming back to its hydrated form. And so it's gonna to start to reveal a little bit more of those light notes. Okay. Second infusion. Liquor again is this kind of straw, cloudy, slightly cloudy straw gold. Mmm, okay. Charcoal has died down. I'm getting wood, wet wood, slightly antique wood, a little bit rosewoody kind of notes. Um, so that's there. Um, but as I said, the predominance here is Once that initial hit of the woodiness and a little bit of the charcoal, which is remaining, dies down, you breathe out through your nose. Now I'm getting the fruit. The mangosteen is back in full force. Got that sour note to it. And when I say sour, I don't mean taste. I just mean that, that smell of sourness. Yeah, those Asian white fruits, lychees and mangosteens. And it's not huge, I'm not talking about, you're not gonna drink this and go, oh, it's a fruit tea. But that's the beauty of these teas, it's the subtlety, it's about digging deep, it's about focusing in. So the mangosteen's there. Even the mangosteen rind, you know, when you peel back that rind and you get a little bit of maybe it left on the fruit or you suck the seed of the mangosteen. You know that dryness that happens, that fruity kind of peel dryness. That's the dryness. It's less of a kind of rock oolong, like those Chidan uh, Da Hong Pao's or those Beidou Lost Robes or those uh, Tie Lo Hans. It's less of that, that real deep rockiness and more of the um, fruit peel dryness. Through the nose, definitely flowers. but I'm still staying with meadows. It still feels very summery, it feels very bright. It's nothing too sweet, it's nothing too heavy, it's nothing too perfumed. Nuttiness is there. You know, this reminds me a little bit of a kind of cross between a Dan Song and a Wu Yi, a classic Wu Yi um, oolong, rock oolong. Those yen chars, those deep roasted yen chars um, are, have that, that, that minerality and a slight dryness and um, the uh, roast. And the dan songs have those high notes, right? Those kind of the, the Milan Xiang dan songs or the ginger flower dan songs. They have those fruitier high notes. This is kind of a, 
they've kind of met um, and this is um, the result. As I said, the Chilan variety is also grown around and made into Dansong and it's grown in Anxi County as well. Okay, so we've gone through eyes dry leaf, nose dry leaf, uh, nose wet leaf, eyes uh, liquor, uh, the texture of the tea and the taste of the tea. And the next step really is we want to see how the minerals are being laid down on the empty cup. So I'm going to pour this, have my last little sip here. So with cooler temperature water, next infusion, I'm gonna brew it longer. Get my nose into this empty cup. Now the empty cup usually reveals more of the warm spectrum notes. Egg custard. Nutmeg, nutmeg, distinctive nutmeg notes. You know, it's kind of those, um, yeah, those spices that work well with egg, nutmeg, cinnamon. Very, very distinctive nutmeg. Really, really clear. Nutmeg and egg custard, so an egg custard tart kind of um, smell. So as I said, empty cup uh, will tend to leave more of the warm notes. All right, let's give this another infusion. And this time I am gonna blast it. I'm gonna really leave it a long time um, because this water is not hot enough. Um, so we're gonna really try and bring out uh, as much as possible. This is not what I necessarily advise people to do. Obviously experiment with your brewing. If you're gonna brew cooler, then you will need to brew longer. Um, and, um, but it's about finding the right temperature for the leaf rather than just playing with the steeping time to match the temperature. So as I said, the weak notes of Chilan in general, as a variety in general, we've tasted a lot of Chilans, is that they can be too weak in terms of their body. That's not the case for this. I'm getting distinctive mouth sensation. As I said, it's got a kind of fruit peel kind of um, dryness to it. They're really starting to open up now. This would be a tea that you could, I think, cold brew. So you could potentially take these spent leaves and cold brew because they have so much brightness in them that they can be cold brewed. It's not gonna have as many infusions as a deep roast Da Hong Pao. Da Hong Pao's can go 10 infusions. So I would say that this is gonna be kind of seven to nine good infusions. Um, that's where you're gonna go with, with Chi Lan. It is a lighter leaf. You can feel it on the weight of it. It doesn't have as much thickness, so it's not got so much to give. So it's something to, enjoy for its freshness for the first seven infusions, eight infusions, something like that. But that's a good brew now. So let's uh, do it unfiltered. Again, color liquor is there. Perhaps this is a little bit, uh, a little bit darker. Oh, it's about the same. If you take a little look at the color of the liquor, Lovely golden colour. Mm. So the spiciness is starting to come out. I'm getting that nutmeg actually in the taste a little bit. A little kind of pepperiness is happening there. A woodsiness to it, a pepperiness to it is there. It's got a little bit of that Shui Shen taste, that kind of slightly rocky taste. I'm getting more of the minerality, but it's there, the top notes are there. And really, I'm trying to think of other tasting notes, but essentially, it really is this kind of mangosteen, um, a little bit of hay, a little bit of dry grass, mangosteen, um, some, some of the, those kind of Asian pears, light meadow flowers, so kind of bright, light, summery, that's why we call it summer haze, and um, um, this woodsiness, this, this slight spiciness, spicy woods. Um, it's really, really, uh, a really, really good rendition of a Chilan. And this is the kind of thing that we have been looking for, failed to find until uh, this year, but that's okay. Right, so the next step in the uh, tea tasting 
is the finish. How is it making me feel now? So as the minerals have laid down, it is getting drier, grippy, satisfying, quenching. Uh, again, I think that these leaves thrown in some cold water and left for a couple of hours will definitely give a good cold brew. It's definitely got a, a, a quenching sensation in my throat. Not much sweetness coming back. I wouldn't expect that with these kinds of teas. It's not like a, a, a raw pour, but a juiciness. So the dryness is translating to a juiciness. And it, so it's giving you the quench and then the refreshment because you're feeling this kind of juicy sensation as your tongue and your mouth starts to produce saliva. So that, I would say it's a, it's a quite a, a nice quenching finish. The color of the leaves, you can see more and more green kind of starting to move into seaweed green colored leaves. Very, very nice. Nice, large, full leaves, matte texture, that kind of um, gun metal kind of green and that uh, matte texture. Again, very, very light. <clears throat> Body sensation. I've had three infusions now and definitely I can feel something in my experience. I remember drinking this tea in Fujian and getting quite heady, quite a little bit woozy, quite heating sensation. Um, but then the heating brings about sweats, so it brings back cooling. It's all about the, that kind of um, uh, contrast, that yin and yang of experience. Um, so heating, I'm feeling the heat, I'm feeling little beads of sweat and a slight heady sensation. And from my recollection, drinking this in, in China, the heady sensation is something that builds and it starts to have a slightly sedated but slightly stoned heady feeling which is really nice but that freshness is still there believe me it's it's that's what that's what I love about this tea that freshness got that 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 zesty fruitiness um, and those light floral notes so that's your 10 step tasting. We did eyes dry leaf, nose dry leaf, nose wet leaf. We looked at the color of the liquor. Uh, <clears throat> we um, uh, experienced the texture of the tea. We tasted the tea. We uh, smelt the empty cup. We um, felt the finish of the tea. We looked at the wet leaves and finally the body sensation. So that's your 10 step tasting for Chilan. It's an excellent tea. I think it's a great summer oolong tea. A lot of the Wuyi oolongs are more suited to those colder weathers, those charcoal roasts, those deep roasts. <clears throat> this is a much more distinctively lighter cultivar produced and uh, you know, roasted in a lighter way to make a nice, light, but satisfying rock oolong. So that's it. I have to record my tasting notes so that I can get them on the website. But that's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give it the thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you would like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don May from Mailey. Thank you for being part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.